Hey guys! It's Ready Man 464 here, Ready Man Music Tutorials. I wanted to do another topic for you guys before I have to go. Uh, this should be a quicker one than 15 minutes. I know that was a drag, but it's about a topic that I thought of was good. This, I'm gonna get hatred for. I'm gonna get hatred everywhere for it. Maybe not everybody will agree with me. So, get ready. I don't think Sgt. Pepper or Abbey Road are the best Beatles albums. As it comes day to day to me, the Beatles have been a part of my life, and that's all I have to say. The Beatles have been a part of many people's lives. As you can see back there, there's a little a little frame. That's when I got to go see Paul McCartney, my first concert, and that was amazing. But you know, it's it's come to my attention the two albums that gets the most love are Sgt. Pepper's and Abbey Road. No doubt, they're great albums. I'm not gonna say these are crap albums. They aren't crap albums. They're amazing albums. They were written by the Beatles, the best band in the world. What can I say? Um, but it's come to my attention that these are the two most popular. Should they be the most popular? I guess so. But you know what? Do they deserve the fandom praise that, oh, this day in the life, best rock song of all time? Or come to, or Sgt. Pepper just in general, best Beatle album. Or Abbey Road saying, oh, this is the most complex album they have ever put out. Oh, this is their best, like, one of their best works as of late Beatle. Um, no. Day in the Life is not going to be better than She Loves You. Or is that going to be better than I Want to Hold Your Hand? Because those actually sold more. I mean, this is this started a trend of Beatlemania, and I'm not just saying it. Just I'm not just saying this is the only reason why. There's multiple reasons why I rather listen to White Album or Rubber Soul and Revolver than listen to Abbey Road or Sgt. Pepper. These are all listenable albums. I love Sgt. Pepper, and I love Abbey Road. If anything, I like Abbey Road better than Sgt. Pepper. But I rather listen to stuff that hasn't been much attention. Much much attention hasn't been brought to them. Yes, every Beatles album has attention, but these are just albums I just don't think get a lot, a lot of recognition. Yes, White Album is has a lot of hits, but it's got a ton more misses. And if you were to listen to Rubber Soul, I the second half of that album. Is something that it's something totally different from what you've heard. Um, let's start with the new, the first album they put out, which I'm going against, Sgt. Pepper. Honestly, Sgt. Pepper is a great idea. Sgt. Pepper is probably one of the greatest uh, concept albums of its time. If don't believe me. On Anthology, he, Paul McCartney says, We want to be someone who we aren't. We want, we don't want to be ourselves anymore. We want to be Sgt. Pepper. And that's the concept. The concept is they're not the Beatles anymore on that album. They are Sgt. Pepper's only hearts called band. And, uh... It's a good concept. Um, it's a good, great... It's a great concept. It just doesn't show through. With all, also, with Sgt. Pepper, there's a lot of songs that I feel get overpraised. A Day in the Life, mostly. This song, I have heard millions of times. And it's a great song. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say any of these songs are really bad. It's just overplayed. And maybe that is a reason why stuff like uh, Dark Side in the Moon by Pink Floyd, to me, is really kind of crap. When you get down to the bone. Yes, it was a good album, but it, 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 you hear it all the time, and that's not the point of an album. If you're going to hear it all the time, why bother listening to music? If you want to hear cool stuff they also do, listen to something else. That's why I've always liked the Vision Bell over Dark Side of the Moon. Um, and that's why I was let down when Endless River came out and crushed my dreams of a new Pink Floyd album. I'm sorry. But anyway, sorry I'm a little 
sneezy here. But I just, I'd rather listen to something that I haven't heard. Or at least something by that band I have not heard or not really heard of. This is when stuff like White Album. If you're starting out to be a Beatle fan like me, or we're starting to be, um, it's just you start out with Sgt. Pepper and Abbey Road. I wouldn't start out with anything else. Just start out with the two basic big albums. And then if you like that music, go on and listen to the other music. This is where I think radio comes into the play. Uh, that's where this whole thing of, I hear it way too much. Day in the Life, fantastic song. The radio overplays this song more than you can say The Beatles itself. I've heard this song daily. Literally, I had a whole week where I heard it daily on the radio. And this wasn't just any radio. This was Sirius XM, which is supposed to have this huge library of uh, amazing songs. But that goes for every song on classic vinyl. Um, but you know what? It, it doesn't make sense to me. Yes, that might be their big hit from Sgt. Pepper, but is it left worth? Is it worth listening to every day? Literally, I'm not joking about that week. I heard that, and what can you do? I mean, if you heard Day in the Life every single day, that's a day in a week. I, as I like to call it, that week was the day in the week. But you get so sick of it. You're like, all right, after like the first time you heard it, like the third day on Wednesday, you're just like, this song's kind of getting old. By the fifth day, you're sick of this song. You don't want to hear it. I'm not saying that it's a bad song. I mean, I cherish the Beatles. And this is, to me, why... Stuff like Sgt. Pepper or is not not the best, in my opinion. Uh, and with stuff like on Sgt. Pepper, there's a lot you can miss. But everybody says, I've looked at polls online, Sgt. Pepper, best Beatle album next to Abbey Road. Or even Abbey Road and Sgt. Pepper together being the best albums. They're far. Sgt. Pepper's got a lot of bad tunes. Being the benefit of Mr. Kite. Though a fantastic mixing of keyboards and crazy sound effects. It's not worth... It's not worth the listen. And that's why you don't hear that on the radio. It's not worth the listen. And if that whole album was worth listening to, why do you have stuff like Fixing a Hole? Why do you have stuff like Sgt. Pepper's Reprise? Why do you have stuff like, uh... I've already said Fixing a Hole, Benefit of Mr. Kite. Basically, every song that wasn't a hit, it's gone. You don't think about it, and they only will play those songs. With an album like Abbey Wrote, you have a lot to cover. Come, come Together being your first song, oh god, that's genius. Uh... But what about all those other songs that you just never really hear? Like, I Want You, She's So Heavy. This is a great song. I really love this song. It barely gets any coverage on Beatle Fan. Yes, it was played on the rooftop in the video game Beatles. The Beatles video game for Rock Band. But that doesn't matter. You know what? In the end, you're still not hearing it that much. And that totally doesn't make sense to me. When better songs, there's better songs that come together. And that's just, bum, bum, da, 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 da. maybe I'm a little over-exaggerating that. But that's basically your whole song there. Um, but it's just, to me, it doesn't make sense. That's where I stand on this al uh, on those albums. That they get constant radio play. And there's songs on it you don't want to hear in the first place. On Abbey Road, I don't want to hear Mean Mr. Mustard in my whole great epic of music on the second half of Abbey Road. I don't want to hear Mean Mr. Mustard. Get that. Get it out of here. Uh, maybe I'm being mean to Mean Mr. Mustard, but to me that song was just a waste. Uh, or that part. You could have put something greater on there. Uh, anything from the anthology in the later years, they could have put on that record, but they didn't. 
uh, in this movie, Sergeant Pepper is just going to be, oh, it's, I gotta be zoned out to listen to it and finally hear it. And I think a lot of people will say, oh, you have to understand, at this time, this was groundbreaking. It still is groundbreaking. I'm not saying it's not groundbreaking, I'm just saying it's overdone. To see people like the Rolling Stones, after sitar playing with George Harrison, go like, oh, Paint It Black needs to have that sitar. That's influential. But when you hear stuff like Day in the Life every day on the radio, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign of anything. Um, but maybe I'm being a little too harsh. After all, there's not a better album. Uh, that's where I kind of stand on White Album. This is twice as long as Sgt. Pepper and Abbey Road. It's two album. It's two albums, literally. And it's probably their best take on modern uh, rock in general. I will never forget the first time hearing stuff like Piggies. Um, not because it's just there. I don't like that song much. Uh, it's just, um, it's just revolutionary to me. That's the album that really spoke to me. And that's what it all comes down to. Whatever album, like, if Sgt. Pepper spoke to you, cool, more power to you. If White Album spoke to you, good for you. You know, good for you. You've kind of stepped out of your barrier. But... To me, White Album had more diversity. It had a lot more going for it. But anyway, it's just a better album. There's more instrumentation, which was better. Uh, and even Revolver and Rubber Soul had better instrumentation to me than Abbey Road. Abbey Road barely had anything on it in my standard. But leave your comments down below. Let's see what happens. Maybe I'll make a little follow-up video saying why I think this album is better and your opinion might be wrong. I'm kidding. All opinions are right to you. So yeah, I'll see you guys around.